Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I'm Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about The Handmaid's Tale Season 3 Episode 1, it is called Night. So full spoilers for the episode as always and much like Season 1 did, we've got the first three episodes uh, on the same day so we'll be doing those over the course of the week. Uh, yes, and you can... screw you Hulu. Yes, I mean there's positives and negatives to it. No, I get it, people go, oh three episodes, it makes every other week after feel shitty and such like a long wait. Connor found something to complain about within 30 seconds, so what a surprise. Hey, I'm playing the part. So, uh, yeah, so so we left off in some big, big moments last season. We, we, June deciding to stay behind and, you know, try and get her daughter. Yeah. Uh, Which turned out was quite a controversial decision based on, you know, what we saw after we did our review. Yeah, people were very mixed on, on that decision. Um, I think... I think for me, at least I remember feeling this way at the time. Maybe if I go back and watch my watch the review from 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 last year, yeah, maybe we've changed over the last yeah. year. But I think my 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 thought at the time was, well, the status quo is definitely changing then because you know so much has yeah. happened. Now she's like oh, this person There's on the inside. There's no going back to normal. Yeah, and I was a little bit worried actually because as early on in this episode, she gets captured and I, and she's going back to the Waterford house, and I'm like. Are, we, are they somehow putting this back to the status quo, even though all this stuff happened? And luckily. But I actually kind of th- thought to myself halfway through, I bet this is how it's going to end, and this is how, what the new status quo is going to be. And it, it was exactly what I thought it was going to be, is that uh, Blair Whitford's character was going to be her new, her new, uh, uh, you know, posting, I think they called it. Yes. Um, and I'm like, okay, so, which is fine, because new status quo. She, she's got a, a commander now who, as we've seen, at least from the lot we've had of him, is something of an ally, and that does yeah. change things up. Definitely, it means she'll be working with her commander rather than against. Yeah, presumably. Because one of the big questions last season was, okay, it's cool that she was going to be in the, the the resistance, you know, from within. She's going to like try and you know fight the system, and she's going to get her daughter back and and whatever. Whereas, like, you know, we've seen how dangerous it is for her to just walk around, but now she's actually got a position with this commander where no, she has a home base where she feels comfortable, where it's she can protection. Yeah, where where she can plan things and do things, and uh, so. You know, I think this might be the weakest premiere of the three seasons. Um, yeah, but you like the ending of where it leaves you for the yeah, season. Yeah, I, li- I like the ending a lot of where it leaves me for the season. And there's definitely good I, scenes throughout, and there's definitely you know good directed moments and stuff like that. Um, there is one scene I do kind of hate, though. Okay. So we'll get to that. Okay. But, you know, as, as I was saying, you know, overall it's a bit weaker, but there are good things in there. But there's one scene that I really dislike. That's fair. Um, but, like... Yeah, because you know, season two's premiere was fantastic. You know, it was you know the, the yeah. baseball park and you know like thinking she's going to die. Like the direction was flawless there. I mean, that entire first like three or four episodes last season, which was like the escape and you know her being away from the house, were so exciting and full of great moments. Um, yeah, this felt like again fairly well executed throughout. But from a writing perspective, kind of felt like we have to kind of say goodbye to the previous version of the show to the point where I'm not even sure if we're going to see certain characters after this episode. We might still see them on their own plot, but certainly there was a goodbye with June at the end where, you know, Nick and even Serena Joy, it feels like they're not going to see each other again for a long time. Oh, definitely. Um, I think it it suffered from just wanting to get on with this season, Mm. Uh, right? Uh, Whereas... The last season you said you had three three or four episodes of okay kind of almost prologue of june on our own whereas this here was like uh, okay we're just gonna get all the the prerequisite beats done so that we can get it with the new commander and do the season from here on out which did it, like her choice to stay back and try and save her daughter when she would like gets to the house, you know, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I keep saying Bradley Whitford, but I need to get his name because he, he was new. I, I didn't learn. Uh, Lawrence, I think. Lawrence. Um, Could be Robert, if Eleanor's his wife, then that's correct. This this cast order's weird. Yeah, Lawrence, you're right, you're right, Joseph Lawrence. Um, so so he takes her, takes her to the the Mackenzie's house, which is where which is where Hannah is. And she gets in the house, the Martha kind of lets her in, and she goes up to the thing. But then, of course, you know, the, the, the vans all pull up outside, and she realizes that, okay, it's, it's, it's dead, dead on arrival. And she just sort of gets down on her knees and, like, you know, waits. She has, I mean, she has a sweet moment with Hannah where she puts a thing around her wrist to let her know she's been there, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, but 
it made her decision in the the final moment of season two feel a little bit stupid because this was how quickly it ended yeah and don't get me wrong by the end of the episode she's in this new status quo and she's in this position where she can maybe achieve something but it did make her her decision at the end of season two feel a little bit short-sighted like how how are you going to achieve this it did and it led to some nice even in this in this uh sequence i realized this the bit at the end where she's talking to the wife Mm. and and they're they're just talking about hannah you know and and it feels very genuine it's what it's it's some of the most genuine i've ever had felt like one of the wives be i think yeah because on the one hand she's saying like stop doing this because you're confusing her and you're giving her nightmares and she's you know ever since she saw you that one time it's been you know chaos well, since at the same time she feels like she is genuinely being a good mother and looking out for it it doesn't feel like it it doesn't feel cynical because she says she she offers up information she says okay here's what she's like she, she's into this she tries to sew but she's bad at it she, she's a good yeah. cook she, she she wants a dog and june's like oh she's allergic she's like yeah yeah i know yeah and it it gives it this kind of personality it gives it this personal touch and june like she does you know because early on the 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 wife is like yeah because i am her mother and at the end of the scene june does kind of because you know it ends with her you know her getting close and looking at her eyes as she's crying saying you have her eyes it's a miracle praise be and she's like well i'm a a mother and it's almost like even though they've had this nice moment she still has to kind of make that point at the end. There's that disconnect, yeah. Yeah, um, and it's because it's, it's almost like it's like anything where we've had any scenes where like we've had a nice scene with a handmaid and a commander, or a handmaid and a wife, where they do become quite pleasant for a scene. Like they almost fall into the trap of like the society. And yeah, it almost are, feels like a real thing, yeah. and then at the end, it's it shatters back to okay, no, but this is how it is in this world. Yeah, this is Gilead, right? Just remembering yeah. there for a second at the end, this is what this is. Um, yeah. So that's it's an effective scene, and you know to get back and um, I, I did like the change of dynamic when she gets back to the house because it's like you know, uh, you know Waterford's like you know demanding to know where his child is, blah blah, and June doesn't even really pay attention to him. She just says to She's Serena, just talking to Serena, yeah, and Serena gets really emotional, and at first it's like it's almost like we're back to Serena and June like hating each other because they they do kind of like fight a little bit verbally. But it's just Serena's really emotional, and then she starts breaking down, and June hugs her. She, like, she, you know, yeah. she holds her. There was a, a really interesting bit with, with Serena earlier, where you know she, she was telling the commander, it's like, no, 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 we're going to give her time to, to escape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, cause like, Nick, just really brazen and open to his face. Yeah, because Nick's kind of like guarding him, and it's kind of under the pretense of his, his uh, you know, protection. You know, it's, oh, it's too dangerous, yeah. so you can't go out. But I, I I honestly think it's quite clear to a point. I mean, at least I thought it was in the scene. It doesn't feel that way at the end. But in the scene, I thought Waterford, like, he kind of knew that Nick was also winning this somehow. Like, it kind of felt like he was guarding him for that purpose. I agree, yeah. Um, so I wonder if we if we do get more of these characters, which I, I I didn't hear about them leaving the show, so I suspect we're going to see their plot on their I, own. I would be sh- especially Serena as well. I feel like it'd be weird to just she's, stop she's got more her. story after the growth that she's had, in, yeah. and even in this episode to, to the, the way we left it, it would be weird to not follow on i agree the good, the good bad feels genuine for a while i could see them seeing each other by the end of the season again because of where the plot goes but if very it, little interaction I yeah think. it feels like going to be separate for a while um but yeah yeah like it's just you know so and i think in the scene at least waterford seeing that on some level serena and june have bonded and connected over something they've shared a viewpoint and it's kind yeah. of tying into you know her trying to like say that the, the you know that the, the big stuff you know why she got her pinky cut off like you know we should all be reading now. Like, no, that should be something that all kids should, should read. She's trying to change the world. Yeah. And, or change change Gilead, I suppose, more specifically. And I think he's seeing here this camaraderie between them that's kind of forming, despite the fact that, if you go back to season one, even a lot of season two, these two characters, uh, just how how opposite and polar opposites they were. Yeah, and I think that um, that this terrifies him. Yeah, because... it does. If if these two can, you know, as you know, you said we saw their relationship. If those two can come together, can they enact any sort of change? You know, I mean, they've just rescued one life and it, between it, them. It's a common theme, uh, actually, with with uh, oppressed women characters is the idea that women can find strength in each other, and they're not even yes. just oppressed. Even just in like toxic male environments, you know, it's this 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 idea that women can eventually kind of can find strength in each other, and the mm. fact that these two, as you say, can do this is terrifying to him because it's this idea that 
things might be in his favour now. You know, the the men of Gilead who want this system might be in power, but this is almost a sign to him that it's not sustainable, that, that eventually yeah, if, they're going to lose. It, it's, it's the idea, okay, if these two that hated each other can come together over, over something, what about all the rest of them that are kind of on the same level with each other, like all the handmaids, you know, all the masters? Yeah, yeah. because under his, his idea... He 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 thought Serena had the nice high standing position in the society where she would be happy, and I think that leads to the, one of the scenes later on where he comes in when she's sitting at the dresser and he's like, "Hey, you know things will be like how they were. I promise. You know things have gotten so crazy. Uh, we'll get back to the way things were." Because I think he's scared that that's not possible. He wants her to believe that she wants to go back to that. When I don't think she does. I think she she's she's had she's realized too much about her own predicament. Yeah, absolutely. He's just going, hey, we'll get back to where it was. You get it to a, a level where she was comfortable because she's had to be c- confronted with the reality too much recently, yeah. right? And that's what's kind of made her more aware. Not that she never knew, but, you know, um, almost ignorance is bliss, but willfully just not looking at, at things. She was happier. His way is, oh, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just go back to it. You can go back to having a nice, comfortable, relatively speaking, you know, lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, so no, really effective uh, in that sense. So, so the characterization here is fantastic. Like as much as I'm saying this is the weakest premiere of the three seasons, it's, it's still full of good stuff. Like it's still full of <laughs> yeah. excellent, you know, writing beats. Uh, yeah, and... well, like the weakest premiere of this show is, is still better than a lot of other shows. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so and yeah, you, know, you know, like Serena eventually sets the house on fire. <laughs> and uh, I love the first half of this scene. You know where. The music's playing, and you know, you have you have June come up and 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 kind of behind her, and it's almost dreamlike. Yeah, to to the point where I wasn't even sure that it was it, like, if it was real or not. If it was real or not, or if it was if it was specifically a fire, because I, I didn't because I didn't quite know where she because I didn't I don't think it was clear at the time where she was pouring like well, obviously it was just flammable liquid. Right? That's all yeah. it really was. But like I, like I I thought she may have been pouring it in a bath or something, and I thought these may be vapors from something. It, yeah, no, you're right. It it felt hypnotic, kind of yeah. dream like, metaphorical, maybe. Yeah, I I thought she was maybe like having some sort of a toxic bath <laughs> or something, you know, like mm. uh, yeah, to I kill herself that. or something like that. Not that I was expecting to, to succeed, but at least attempted suicide at this point. Yeah, uh, wouldn't have felt like out of out of the beat for the character where she is right now and how devastated she is. Yeah, um, so, but no, so so we have uh, this sort of majestic scene, and June's like, "No, we need to get you out of here. Like, you know, we have to leave." You know, she she cares about Serena surviving, which again, yeah, big difference from before. Um, you know, and her, do they get outside? The Martha's there, and then eventually the fire trucks and yeah. all the rest of it. I, I I really, you know, I said at the start that was the bit I disliked mm. a lot. It's when the music, the the song comes in. Oh sure, okay. I it just felt so. Out of following on from that beautiful dreamlike sequence to kind of just jarringly swap into this you know upbeat pop song i think that show's yeah. very good usually with it, with its uh source music in terms of like yeah contrasting what's going on in the scene um it didn't particularly bother me this one but like i can't necessarily argue either i, that... I think it was the the flow coming from the the moment before into that mm. just felt wrong uh, it just felt like the wrong decision to me because yeah, I agree. You know, it has had some excellent uh, source music usage in the in the past. So, yeah, I mean that that that, that that's basically, uh, and we have this goodbye where you're, June's going off with the the men in the van, uh, and I wasn't sure where she was going immediately. I you know, to take her back to the the training center or the detention center, whatever we're calling it. Yeah. And and was that, was Watford still in the house? No, no, he was away. He was away at work because he because that was the thing. Oh. He was it was the scene where he was he was talking about making things normal again. That's him leaving. You're right. Yeah, I, I was just not sure the way the way uh, June kept looking upstairs, right? Mm. And and I wasn't sure. I was is he in there? No, she was looking at her room. She was sort of like it was sort of this big, you know, yeah, cathartic. Yeah. This hellhole's been destroyed. Kind oh yeah, of thing. yeah, yeah. Not when she was specifically looking at her yeah. room, but just in general when she was looking upstairs. I wasn't sure if he was up in his study as well. Um, because yeah, actually, there's a slow motion, uh, like sequence in the, during the fire of like his office being burned, and we see even the the Scrabble board, like the, the tiles yeah, are do, going yeah. wonderfully poetic, shall we say? Maybe yeah. on the nose a little bit, but that's okay. I think that's, that's that is kind of powerful. This is the death of the show as we knew it, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It very much has. A, we're on a new new phase here. Um, uh, it's a little bit on the nose, but I'm okay with it. 
yeah i i think the it's funny because again like my, my 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 one main criticism early on in the episode is just the feeling of it quickly getting her back to the house but everything that actually happens once we get there is pretty great <laughs> it's just it is yeah it's, well, like, like i said even the stuff that is really great and i like and i like where it leads to it does just feel like okay this could have been two episodes at least all of this sure stuff. yeah 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 um but at the same time, I suppose the danger of being two episodes, though, if we ended, let's say we only ended the first like episode with her getting back to the house, I would be worried that we were just going to be at the house for the rest of the season. We would, and we'd have been going, well, this feels kind of samey to last yeah. season. We absolutely would have done. Yeah, whereas the end yeah. of this makes it very clear, status quo is different. And, it you know, is, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so that part's good. Um, and... Because actually, there's a point early on, uh, just to go back to when June's like asking uh, Lawrence to take take her to the Mackenzies, he's like, you know, we can all get in the car. We'll try and catch the truck before it gets to you know to Canada to get to the border. And she's like, no, no, I can't leave without my baby. It's not happening. And he's he's like, you know, saying why this will be difficult. And she's like, look, what you have done tonight could get you on the wall. And it's, she's basically threatening that she'll turn them in. <laughs> <laughs> turn yeah. them in uh and he just kind of smiles and goes feisty you know as we're kind of getting more his who his character is uh mm. so, so yeah obviously the punisher we see her feet it's all been like whipped and you know scarred yes. yeah. uh That's doesn't painful. doesn't look yeah doesn't look pleasant uh she's scrubbing the floors but she does get to hear you know, obviously this isn't her current we'll talk about the other stuff separately but you know she finds out that that um you know Dell's made it you know uh, the child and emily made it to canada and yeah. Obviously, this is a, a, again like a, a, an emotional moment for her, and she's her suitcase is there. So like, okay, you've got a new posting, and like I knew who it was going to be because I mean, if it wasn't going to be Lawrence, I, I would be like, well, what's the show now? Then she's just in another asshole commander. Yeah, house. I, I think I mean it was pretty predictable. Obviously, we knew he was a regular now anyway. It yeah. was it was always. I think we might have even predicted this at the end of last season. I, I think we predicted that he would be an ally. I don't know if we predicted that she would actually be... An, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we did predict that. I mean, I'll take credit for it if we did. But Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not confident yeah. with it, but we might have done because it feels like, you know, it felt relatively predictable during this episode, at yeah. least. Uh, but, you know, so she's standing there just kind of waiting and you don't see his face. You just sort of see the body kind of come in at the door frame, and you hear him say something. You know who it is, and she slowly turns around and sees him and he just looks at her and goes you're not going to be trouble are you and she just gets this smirk on her face and that's yeah. that's how we ended the episode it's a really good edit of the episode uh, it is yeah it's, it sets us up really nicely for, for, for what we're going to do um so no i'm i'm very intrigued uh but where we go from here we're, we're really in kind of a new territory in a lot of ways yeah yeah uh, we should nice. um should also talk about the emily scenes a little bit yeah yeah um i really like the scene where she she's first you know gets into canada she's you know she drag drags her and the baby has to drag themselves out of the water do, do you know what i like about this uh just is this in the concept or the broad concept of the show is that we moira's gotten crossed before but we never actually saw the crossing we just saw her already at like you know yeah. immigration essentially or, re or refuge camp yeah um this was like no the, the literal she's getting across the physical border I, what i love though is she doesn't think she's made it. she thinks she's still in you know in Gilead. She she you know, when when someone comes up with the with, with the light, yeah, she's terrified. She thinks, right, this is it, it's over. You know, she's yeah. going to the wall. And, and he, and he he's he doing... going, Hey, do you do you need, you know, amnesty? Yeah, he's he's basically doing this official spiel to just confirm you're a refugee so he can take the appropriate action. And yeah. they give her like a, you know, one of those uh, foily blankets, uh thermal yeah. blankets. And uh, you know, and we get this scene. I mean, if anything, the, the only thing I don't like about Emily's stuff in this episode is I thought it maybe went a bit far with the round of applause as, as she's coming into the hospital. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I liked everyone staring at her. I, I liked the idea that when a handmaid gets across, because they can see, because they see the bag of clothes, they see the, the, the red cloak. Like, they know who what she's been. They know what she's went through. Do you, oh, do you think this is just because she's a handmaid? Or do you think, it, uh, you know, or is it something that they do for everyone who comes into the hospital, for, you know, to kind of make them feel welcome almost um it's hard to say because I, I get the impression it's maybe heightened here because she has a baby with her like this is like a quite possibly yeah this is even a bigger deal because she's with child um yeah. not, i mean though it's not her child but i mean doesn't we don't know Do, that doesn't matter does it yeah um and she's been very protective because you know because because the, the doctor obviously this nurse or doctor means no harm she's there to help but oh yeah we'll do, just do the health checks you know make sure everything's okay but emily is clearly just not ready to trust people she's too used to gilead I think uh, they seem pretty understand that. Oh yeah, you know, I'm, not, I'm like, not. Sure, yeah, that's no problem. And 
I think they're very aware of okay the conditioning they've been through and and know what to expect. Yeah, not blaming her by by all, and they, they yeah they're 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 treating her with the, the kid gloves because they know what she's been through. Uh, and obviously we have a scene toward the end where Luke and Moira uh, they've got a they've got a post they've got they've got the mail yeah. right and they go there to pick it up and it's a, it's the photo of Hannah of her current age or close to and Luke gets emotional and starts crying. And then Emily shows up behind him. It says, "Are you Luke?" <laughs> he's like, "Yeah." He's like, "And we don't hear the whole story. We we just hear her say, uh, my name's Emily. Your wife saved my life.' That's all we hear." Um, yeah, but it's all you need to hear right now. That said, though, like the reaction to "This is your wife's child" is going to be kind of a big deal, I think. <laughs> yes. Because <Yeah. laughs> it's not his child. It's his wife's it's child. It's not. Oh, um, yeah. not that I think he's going to blame her not that I think he's going to be I mean obviously oh, no, I, I don't think he'll be resentful nothing in this show so far has made me think he'll be resentful uh, yeah th- there'll be a, obviously like there'll be a weird mix of emotions because it's something she was forced into even though we know it was with Nick and it it was kind of forced but it, there was also a genuine relationship there to have... as, as genuine as something could have been yeah, yeah. Uh, so there is a lot of murkiness to this that's hard to unpack uh, but yeah I, I don't think he's going to be resentful to her for, for any if, stretch if he is then I I will be calling it out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because that will be out of character. Yeah, well, I can see him being like, like acting weird about it. Because, but I don't think it'll be resentment. I think it'll be, how do you cope with this? How do you deal with the fact oh, that yeah, there's sure. the, there's this product now of like what his wife's been forced to do? Like you know, having to deal with the reality of it. You yeah. know, even more so than he already has, obviously. Um, but you know, the, the idea that. It, it's it's been very removed from him he hasn't been there he hasn't been seeing it but now he would have you know something in his hands that that quantifies yeah. what what has happened yeah i thought that previously on actually did a really good job of like summing up all the big moments last season uh, especially when he saw waterford because i was i was glad to be like reminded of that and like oh yeah that was I, a good moment. i'll be honest i didn't really watch it <laughs> <laughs> i kind of zone out on previously on just 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 have a habit of it most of them sure see when it's the first episode back of a new season i typically pay more attention see, because it's been a while that that makes sense and i i should i just don't you're awful is what you're saying okay the, the only times I, I really pay attention to pretty much any previously on is when they have some sort of style to them yeah, you know, when they when they got some sort of clever rhythm, or you know, they're, they're doing something with them. I, I don't know. I just typically I just zone out on, on autopilot. Hmm. What one of my best, uh, one of my favorite. It's just as a weird thing to say, but what I have a favorite previously on, and it's because it does this thing where it's not like a previously on from the, because what I'm going to say isn't that weird if it's just a previous episode, right? Uh, it was the episode of Lost where part of the previously on was from the finale of the previous year. And because Lost has the thing where it's like flashing forward and back, you know, yeah. like we were jumping around in time a lot in Lost. Uh, and after the previously on, it literally picks up where this scene that we got a year ago, like, ended. And it was like a big mm-hmm. deal that there was more to this scene. And it was just like a really, really nice moment. Uh, and it did this great thing where, because the scene ended with someone in a car leaving, and then it cuts back in after, you know, the previously on, and the car brakes just hit. And it was like a really nice, it was like the previously on made this se- opening of the scene have more impact like it felt like a, a, a big moment yeah. i'd say well, like um the back half of the last season of westworld uh you know had really good previously ons where they started doing just like all, all these cuts of moments rather than here's like you know scenes or lines oh, sure. of dialogue it was just cuts of you know just imagery and it's like oh that was that was pretty stylistic and it had it had a flow to it a rhythm uh like that, that's a previously on that oh, i pay attention to those mm. whereas when it's not like here where it's just Here's, you know, 90 seconds of, you know, a couple of lines of dialogue here, a scene here, you know, that sort of thing there. I, I just zone out. It's, it's, I'm terrible for it, I know. So, no, I mean, that's, that's pretty much the, the episode. Um, yeah, I mean, like I say, weakest of the three premieres, but still really solid in a lot of ways. I was a little bit worried early on because I thought it was like, are they shoehorning this back to where it was? And they weren't. They, they were just kind of like finishing it off, essentially, and, you know, yeah. setting us up for the next part. But um, I feel like great scenes, though. I mean, I, I think the Serena and June moments, especially, um, yeah. really hit I, I really liked Serena standing up to Waterford and just being so. Yeah, so open. that was, that was great stuff. It. 
Uh, Oh, yeah, honestly, the kind of the going to see Hannah, and even though I like the conversation with the wife, the the idea that she was immediately being captured was probably kind of this weird stumbling block for me. But it was like, wait, yeah. we're just doing this already? Okay, it's kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. I um, agree with that. But no, Hammy's Tale. So, uh, looking forward to uh, the next episode, which we will have up hopefully very very soon. Uh, the plan is to uh, that's the plan. Yeah, the plan is to record it very very soon. So. Uh, we'll hopefully get these the first three out as quickly as we can, and obviously it'll be week to week from there. Um, on late Wednesdays, pretty much going forward, as far as we as far as we know. Uh, so by all means, uh, let us know what you thought of the premiere in the comments below. You can like and subscribe, all that stuff. You guys on the Twitter's at mail underscore fuzz for channel updates. If you want to support the show, uh, you can over to patreon.com slash mailfuzztv. We can support us for as little as a dollar per month, and you get some bonuses, some extras, and some early stuff. And keep you know, just keep the reviews coming, basically. Uh, also, obviously, check out other content we have. Uh, if you're on the almost cancelled TV reviews audio feed on the podcast feed, uh, it gives a it gives a rating. Uh, check out the other shows that are on there. Uh, but do be do be aware there's a, a Netflix reviews audio feed as well. Uh, it's it's yeah. worth That's checking out. Right now, you'll be getting Black Mirror. Yeah, we're doing Black Mirror over there right now, and then we'll be getting a Stranger Things in a month's time. So you know that that, that feeds. Dark before that. Oh yeah, darts before that. <laughs> yeah, Jeez. yeah, I know. Darks in like two weeks. Damn it. Um, but yeah, so go go check out all the stuff uh, in our movie reviews and whatnot. Uh, but that's it. So thank you once again for watching and listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching TV, guys. Have you got any vanilla? <laughs>